This is the Griffin Realty Group Ask a Griffin podcast, episode number 10. Should I have my property professionally cleaned? Are you a buyer, seller, or real estate agent who has questions about buying or selling residential property, but you can't seem to find an easy way to get the answers? Well, then, hey, you're definitely in the right place. I'm Danny Griffin, the founder of the Griffin Realty Group and the host of the Ask a Griffin podcast. To help you take immediate action to get started in the right direction, if you need to sell or buy property now or in the very near future, you can take advantage of our free step-by-step guides that are waiting for you over at griffincourses.com. That's G-R-I-F-F-I-N courses.com. All right, let's get started. Should I have my property professionally cleaned? Well, this is a no-brainer for me, and in fact, it's one of my favorite subjects because it's one of the easiest pieces of advice to give when somebody's dealing with selling residential property. And the answer is absolutely yes, but let me go down the list in, in the way that I see it. Number one, curb appeal, curb appeal, curb appeal. Now, I know I'm speaking to different types of product owners, but just let's presume that first I'm going to deal with the single family house with a drive-by and curb appeal matter a lot and you have direct control over it. Now, I'll talk to all my folks downtown Boston where you might be part of a condominium project and you don't have as much control or maybe you just hired someone to go out and sweep the curb, sweep the street. If the city doesn't do it for you, go do it, right? And have it ready. Talk to the board about can we get the, the building power wash? Can we get it repointed? All these things that, that happen in the exterior of an apartment building are important that you have an idea that they're being done regularly and that there's money in the till to take care of them. But clearly, if you own an individual property, curb appeal. It's like anything. When you drive by, you're going to cast upon that that drive by, that property. You're going to cast upon that your first impression. And look, there's no rocket science to say first impressions matter. They do. And, And again, it's difficult to control that of your neighbors, but I've gone as far in the past to ask some of the neighbors if I could actually have their property cleaned for them so that when somebody went by mine, it looked even better. And I wasn't doing that in an insulting way, but let's just say somebody was elderly and there were a lot of leaves from last fall and we're coming into the spring market. I mean, why not just go out there and not only help yourself, but help them and improve the immediate curb appeal of everything? It matters. Because again, even in this digital age with everybody doing their initial homework online, people are still driving by. I mean, it is still a rarer occasion that somebody puts a property under agreement until they can see it during the home inspection. That does happen. But it's a much rarer case that people don't or don't at least drive up to it. I mean, I've had people that had some listings that they wanted to see and we pulled up and the first thing they said is forget it. They don't even get out of the car and you feel terrible because you have the other agent waiting for you and and it's just such a no-brainer that could have been taken care of. Hey, by the way, how about all you agents? Why don't you do it for your clients if they don't have the money? Help them. Put on your boots and your jeans and get out there. Rake the leaves for them. Do something. It's your listing. It's a privilege to do so. Do whatever it takes to clean outside. However, my best advice is always best practices. Hire a professional landscaper period. You would be blown away at how quickly they can come to your home and in a day or even a half day's worth of work, depending on how big it is, how much work there is to be done, how quickly they can transform your curb appeal. And I mean transform it. Now, a lot of people don't think of that as cleaning, but that's exactly what it is. You're cleaning the outside to put a fresh cut on the grass, to to edge the beds in. And I'm not even talking about plantings and trees and this. I'm talking about cleaning up the outside. It's very easy to do so that now from the curb being sweat and blown out by, by a real leaf blower and cleaned up and then onto the grass, which even if it hasn't been watered in it's tough shape, a good cut and a good scrubbing, a real thatch rake that pulls it down and then getting to the beds, cutting those in. And if there's a little extra money in the budget to put dark mulch in. I love dark mulch because when I'm going to clean, it's that crisp differentiation between the color of the grass and the beds where the next person could envision themselves doing what they do, right? Now, of course, we've already talked about some of the other fix-ups that are major once you hit the house, but I'm talking about the landscaping. 
That is really the essence of cleaning. It's like cleaning the outdoor rug, right? That's what it's doing. And, and, and so all around the home, and if there are trees with branches that are hanging down, that's all part of this outdoor cleaning so that there's a cleaner palette. When somebody comes up and looks at this outside, they say, ah, I see what I could do with that. I see the beds. I see the rolling lawn. Yes, it needs to be replaced, but I'll worry about that. That might happen in your favor as the seller if you have these things professionally done. I mean, just think about this cognizantly if you're thinking, even if you're not, if you're just curious about real estate, but especially if you're thinking about selling. Watch during the spring especially where landscaping companies come and they refresh a yard. I mean, it's transformational. It's hard to believe what was under there. You know, a lot of professional real estate flippers see that. I can see that. Back when I was early in my career, I loved flipping properties. You would go in and people just didn't want to do some of the basics and it just wasn't hard to transform the property for not a lot of money. So definitely hire a professional landscaper to clean the outside of your property because curb appeal is critical. Next point, should I hire a professional interior cleaner, right? Yes, of course you could and should because that is best practices as well. The deep clean is what I'm talking about. Now, see, a lot of people will say, well, I can do that myself. (laughs) We're always thinking before we go to sell how much money we can save, but yet we still want to go get the max money the market will bear. Well, you have these, these counterpoints against each other. Whenever there is even a little bit of money, that you can put at preparing your property a little bit money, time, and energy that you can put into cleaning your house and it's beyond the do-it-yourself stuff, hire somebody professionally. If you have a limited budget, tell them. See how far they can go because it's still deeper and it's still more professional than you could do yourself. When you hire a great interior cleaner, I am telling you they will clean spots that you would never imagined. See, typically when we think about cleaning on the interior, we think about the kitchen deep clean, we think about the bathrooms, but there are all sorts of spots under, over, around, behind places that when they get cleaned, they change the whole sense of place. I mean, it is phenomenal. Now, as part of the interior cleaning, clearly that's a wonderful opportunity to have that professional cleaning company help you throw things out. I mean, it's a great idea to get a dumpster or or get some trash delivery company to come in as part of that cleaning process. Get rid of the stuff so that the deep cleaners can get what was beneath the stuff. But it is transformational and we can't make a, a more highly recommended attempt to prepare your property for max value than having that interior cleaner come in. Okay. Now, this all leads to the question. Does all this add value? Why would I even go through that? And I'm telling you, a thorough cleansing can be transformational. Oftentimes, when somebody, and again, of course, if you have the wherewithal to do all of these tips that we go through on the seller course, do them. Do them. Even if you have to do them over time, do them. This is best practices. We're trying to give you what we know as professionals to be the best ways to maximize the market value of your property, no matter what the circumstances the market are. So we know that cleaning is transformational because what most people don't want is to inherit your headaches. So clearly the, the, the major issues have more to do with repair upgrade, deferred maintenance. And we've talked about that in previous episodes. We we get it. But even before all of that, let's presume we have somebody who says, all I'm going to do is deep clean. I'll bite. I'll do outside. I'll do inside. I'll work with the condo association. association. We'll do this. Okay, good. Now, the idea is, is that as there is less personal property in there. And I mean stuff. Look at, let's all admit it. To a certain extent, we all hoard or save too much stuff. It fills all the little nooks and crannies of even a small place. Get rid of that stuff that is not going with you in the next move that doesn't matter and is not critical. Why? Because what you're doing is distorting this picture that you're asking a buyer to look at Physically, it's almost like walking through, kinesthetically walking through a painting from the outside to the inside to the rooms. They're walking through it and they're experiencing it. And what they're feeling 
matters. A real estate sale is a majorly emotional sensory sale. How do I feel in this property? Do I feel like it's a home? Do I feel like it could be my home? See, there's the emotional attachment that has to happen. Somebody needs to be able to see what they could do. And that's why I say, don't go all crazy trying to be perfectly prepared and guessing what the buyers want. Clean the matters. Now, of course, if you can do some of the deferred maintenance, you can go back to an episode where we talk about what we believe you should do with neutrality when you de- you determine what you're going to rehab other than the major systems. Stay neutral, right? Don't try to be creative. That's not the right time to do so. But cleaning has a similar effect to any of that anyway. I mean, even if somebody doesn't like the color of the walls, have the walls washed. When's the last time you washed down the walls? When's the last time that that you actually had the carpets really deep cleaned with a machine, right? When was the last time you really deep cleansed the floors and even waxed them uh, if that was the, the case or the tiles with special tile cleaners? See what I'm saying? There's always that more professional level we can go because at the end of it, we are trying to restore the condition as close to a newer feeling as possible. And this can even be done with countertops that are old, bathroom fixtures that are old. You can make them look wonderful with some sense of cleaning, okay? And when somebody comes in and they see that, even if they want to do the deferred maintenance, even if you're giving them a better price because you're passing on the deferred maintenance to them, they still want to be able to see themselves going in and having to do little to nothing and just live. See, we, we lose that sense of, oh, I just don't want to live on somebody else's stuff. And clean changes that. See what I'm saying? Very simple. These concepts are simple. Now, as somebody who's done this for thousands of hours and been in over thousands of houses with people, I watch and witness this actually happening. See, you're drawing somebody in to see if they can look around and say, this works for me. And the more distractions they have and the more they think they'll have to do and the less they think you care, your value is just going down and down and down to the point many will say, forget it. It's just too much for me. What a shame when this is so easy. So let me go back through these couple of points here. Should I have my prof- my property professionally cleaned? Yes, and, and here's the first question I get. Well, should I have a landscaper clean the outside? Yes, because the curb appeal is so critical, we might not even get them in the house. So if again, we haven't c- cleaned from literally the curb, through the grass if there is any, up to the, the beds and, and all around the house, trim the trees, trim the bushes. If we haven't done what's already there, well, you're killing your value. People will drive right by and it just won't look inviting. But let's presume we get that done. Great. Should I next hire a professional interior cleaner? Why wouldn't I just do it myself? Because you have no idea what a deep, deep clean is until a real pro does it. It's stuff that you wouldn't even think to go looking at. They do it in a very rhythmic, routine way because they've done it. And they know where the dust and the dirt and all the uglies hide and they get them for you. And it changes ultimately... Okay, with the last question here, does it add value? Absolutely. It changes the whole perception that a buyer has of the property and you start to creep up on that value ladder. Okay, let me summarize it this way. The final sale price of a property has much to do with the sensory perception of the buyer where clean equals peace of mind. And that translates into a higher sense of monetary value. Hey, remember, you can take immediate action to get started in the right direction if you need to sell or buy property right now or in the near future by getting our free step-by-step guides that are waiting for you at griffincourses.com. That's G-R-I-F-F-I-N courses.com. You get over there and get started and we'll give you a free plan that includes all these tips that we give you. One nice booklet. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen so that you'll miss out on these real estate insights each time we upload an episode. We also post all of these episodes on our social media channels. So remember to turn on the notifications for Griffin Realty Group and you won't miss the reminders. Hey, we'd also appreciate it if you would share this content with other people who are thinking about selling or buying and they get the help they need. 
Thanks for listening. Remember, nobody's coming for you. So go get to work on your own plan for buying and selling property. And we'll see you in the next episode. And do us a favor. Keep your comments and questions coming. We just might feature one of yours right here on the Ask a Griffin podcast.